globally, we can see that swirling effect. How well is this impeller mixing things? Keep moving along here. Uh, the fourth use case I'll be talking about today is fluid mixing. So you see on the animation here, there's a rotating region. You can kind of see those fan blades spinning around here, mixing up water in a tank. And the, the red that it's showing here is a concentration of chemicals, uh, of a chemical that I'm inter introducing through this inlet. So as far as the setup goes on this fluid mixing problem, uh, we, we specify an RPM on the impeller. The tank is initially filled with water, and then I introduce that chemical flow through the inlet. And this is also a transient solution, so we see this with respect to real time. That's how I pulled in this animation. So we can see that flow field develop and how, uh, with respect to real time, how those chemicals are getting distributed throughout the entire tank. And yeah, we can observe how, how well things are mixing. So in this mixing tank, as far as the setup goes in my input data, when I'm defining my fluids that I'm considering, I choose two. So I have water and there's this sodium hypochlorite uh, to introduce those chemicals in there. And to get the flow field moving, I define it with this rotating region. So you see, I've modeled this kind of, I call it a dummy body around the blades. And inside of that dummy body, we prescribe this rotating region and say around that or in that region, the flow is always going to be moving at, you know, I defined it as radians per second here, but it could be an RPM as well as just unit system. But uh, specifying how fast that region is rotating around the fan blade. So really what happens, it's not that the fan blade itself isn't rotating. It's more the mesh is moving around the structure, which, you know, produces the same effect of, of creating a vortex in this case. So that's how the, the rotating region works. The geometry itself isn't moving, but the, the fluid around the structure is moving. So from here, you just have to define a boundary condition on the top of that tank uh, to, to, to make it like a slip condition at that location. And there's my inlet. Uh, just uh, mass flow one pound per second and then underneath the substance concentration that's where i've uh, specified that at that inlet i'm just introducing 100 percent sodium hypochlorite and then on on this side just to just to give it kind of a pressure relief over here just a static pressure over on the other side and then give it some goals for um yeah what i'm interested in this mass fraction of sodium hypochlorite that's that's my parameter of interest. So again, pointing the solver in the right direction. That's where I, I want to see good results uh, around the mass fraction of the chemicals. And then from there, yeah, we just do some mesh controls around the, uh, the locations of interest where the outlets are, um, yeah, around the fan or around that impeller blade, as well as at the inlet, getting good information there. So what we can look at as far as uh, results go with a transient solution, see here on my results folder, I have loaded a time moment of 120 seconds. So I let this study run for two minutes of physical time. And what we're looking at is just that, that moment in time at two minutes. So we can see velocity profiles in there around that fan blade. So we can see that that's causing the, uh, the mesh to, or or the flow field to move. But ultimately what we're interested in, I'm just gonna show all of these. These are cut plots showing the volume fraction of that sodium hypochlorite. So that's telling us how well distributed are these chemicals. And I'll get my camera oriented just right and go into that transient explorer again, where I can scrub through the entire result profile and you see right away at time zero coming up here as that those chemicals are gradually getting introduced and you know at time zero is also when the impeller starts to spin so we can see right away at the very beginning the chemicals are just kind of sinking down in the tank because the flow field hasn't quite developed yet eventually though those chemicals run into that rotating region 
while that vortex is developing. And what we see here is as that flow field picks up and starts gaining velocity, it starts getting distributed out through that vortex that gets created. So as I'm coming through here, you can see now, now they're kind of working their way up towards the top of the tank. That chemical concentration is more towards the top of the tank once that vortex develops. So we can see that happening with respect to real time. And yeah, by the end, it's pretty, pretty uniform by the end. And we, yeah, we can even see the kind of the effect of that vortex um, with respect to the concentration of those chemicals. So that's the type of thing we can do with a transient study for fluid mixing. Just give that one quick watch straight through uh, with respect to real time here, seeing how that, that vortex develops and, you know, kind of, pulls its way up towards the top. And eventually by the end of the two minutes, it's, it's a pretty well developed and we've got a, a, a starting to get a nice di distribution of chemicals, even at the bottom of the tank where it's becoming pretty uniform at the bottom of the tank as well. Of course I could keep that going running for longer than two minutes. If I wanted, that was just a solve time thing. Um, as I'm preparing for this today. So if you wanted to see it eventually reach a steady state, uh, you could just request more time or instead of doing a transient solution, you could say just solve towards the steady state solution as well. So I'm gonna jump out of that transient explorer quick here to look at a couple of other plots here. So I'll, I'll hide those cut plots out of the way and now look at a surface plot. Oh, that's another one that would be cool to look at in the transient explorer. Give me a second. I'll load that back up. With respect to real time, you can kind of see the concentration of chemicals just immediately on the wall. So you can again see that vortex develop on the surface of the tank. That's another pretty cool one. These animations are really compelling. So that's the surface plot. But what I was going to show next is this ISO surface. So here, this is where we can see uh, that, you know, remember the ISO surface that we were looking at in the um, in that electronics enclosure where we were isolating out the location of where it was 25 degrees Celsius. Now we're looking at where is it 1% volume fraction of chemicals. So we, yeah, that we're seeing the profile of that, that vortex um, and how it's mixing. And with this, I can load it. I could do the transient explorer on this, but I'm not going to because this ISO surface is a um, pretty demanding plot to show. So instead, I'm just going to load individual moments in time here. So you see at 60 seconds, that vortex hasn't quite developed yet. See, maybe if we jump up to 90 seconds, how does it look now? It's starting to swirl around now that that vortex is uh, is kind of peeling around the edge of that tank. And then of course, oops, by the time we get to the end, then we get that nice fully defined vortex.